my client's grandparents purchased this house in the 40s. So originally this was two small rooms at the back, one of which was the kitchen, and then there was a dining room that you walked through to get to the kitchen. The first thing we wanted to do to this space was really open it up. I mean, I'm not always for opening up every space, but in this case, it made a lot of sense. We wanted to bring in a lot more natural light as originally there was one window that faces another house, so it's just a brick wall, and then a teeny tiny window to the backyard. The first thing we started with was looking at a million different floor plans and how would we be able to achieve a multi-purpose space that would work for the kitchen and maybe even make the dining room a little bit more functional. And we love the idea of bringing a little bit of mid-century feel with a slab walnut door, but we didn't want it to be too oppressive by having all this walnut everywhere. We talked a lot about a shaker cabinet, but we kind of wanted to make it a little bit more contemporary and a little bit cleaner. So we settled on this really thin frame shaker-esque door, but it's only about an inch profile. So it doesn't really read like a shaker and it also doesn't have any hardware. So it looks really clean and sleek. And then with the walnut lowers, it adds a little bit of warmth, but isn't so heavy. I feel like we went through a phase where everyone was using really big hardware, which I'm not opposed to. And I think sometimes that works really well, but it's sometimes tricky because you can say we want no hardware. But if you have a large pantry, you can't have no hardware in a pantry, it won't open properly. So in this case, we use a really thin brass tab pole on our pantry to still keep it clean, but give it a little bit of a modern look. The wall is a slab backsplash. Because we wanted to carry it all the way up on that wall, in the end, the slab was gonna be the cleanest way of doing it because any kind of tile would start to get busier and add a lot more texture. There are seams, but you can hardly see them because of the way that it's fabricated. Our fabricators are fantastic. We've been working with them for a long time. And they even mitered the edges that go right into the windowsill. So we get this really clean finish. And the deeper sill is a great spot to put stuff behind the sink, which we always really like. We thought a lot about how we could add a spot that became more than just a dining room. So this has really become a hangout spot. I mean, there are teenagers who work on laptops there. You can sit there and read a magazine and put your feet up and look out the windows. Which I think living in smaller houses in the city, it's important to have spaces that you're not just using for one activity. The exterior door that's on the landing was existing. So one of our challenges with the back window wall was how to frame it in a way that it seemed even and symmetrical, even though the door is so much lower. So we ended up having a super tall door that means that it can line up with the top of the regular height doors on the other section. The bar area that we built is actually a section of a more shallow cabinetry and there's actually ducts running up behind it and plumbing. So we built kind of a nook in the framing to slide the fridge back in. So the fridge actually goes beyond the countertop back into this cavity. It was tricky, but the contractors took it on and figured it out. I find the trick of the powder room is nobody wants to use it if it doesn't feel hidden in a way. We really thought about all different ways that we could insulate it for sound and also make it feel like its own little separate nook. Their wall jogs there and it used to be a little nook with just the window and they had a buffet under it. So we used that existing space for the powder room and then pulled our millwork flush in front of it. That conceals the powder room and also provides sound insulation. These clients were really fantastic to work with. They got involved in the process, which is always my favorite, because in the end, the best design is a collaboration between the homeowners and the designer. And these clients' grandparents actually purchased the home in the 40s, so it had been in the family for a really long time. So seeing the transformation was a pretty big deal. Um, but in the end, they were really thrilled with the results.